Every year, thousands of vehicles are scrapped. Frequently, the cause is corrosion eating into the structural members of the vehicle and destroying them from the inside, so that when eventually the problem becomes visible, it is too late. Corrosion both reduces the value of the car and leaves the unsuspecting driver and passengers more vulnerable to injury should the vehicle be involved in an accident. Ultimately, the vehicle is declared unroadworthy at its MOT test. The causes of corrosion are numerous. Hostile weather conditions, often aggravated by the use of salt on icy roads. Natural salts in the sea air surrounding our coasts. Sulfur dioxide from industrial pollution in our large towns. And finally, the basic design of the vehicle itself, which allows these substances to become trapped in crevices and box members. Being concerned about the consequences of corrosion, the majority of vehicle manufacturers have invested heavily in corrosion preventive processes. A good example is this electro coating dip incorporated during the painting process. The result is that long term anti corrosion warranties are now offered on a wide range of cars. All such warranties are subject to different conditions, so the warranty documents should be read carefully before starting on any corrosion protection treatments. This program will show work being carried out on an Austin Metro, paying particular attention to the various anti-corrosion processes involved. The basic methods shown are equally applicable to any make of car. However, it's important that the manufacturer's corrosion protection manual is complied with in each and every case. When tackling body repair work, the repairer must always ensure that the warranty remains valid. Usually this will mean employing the materials and methods specified by the vehicle manufacturer. And moreover, some stipulate that corrosion protection treatment may only be undertaken by an authorized dealer. The Austin Rover body sealing and preservation manual gives details of the operations to be carried out. On the Metro, the following materials should be used where applicable. A zinc rich primer during welding. Sealers on all internal and external joints. Vinyl sealer on the underbody. Wax on all interior surfaces of box members, cavities and doors. Wax on the underbody. And finally a coating of clear wax all round the engine bay. So right from the beginning of the repair process, the operator should take action to reduce the probability of corrosion occurring. Here he uses a zinc rich weld through primer on all bare metal edges which are to be spot welded. When the panel beater has finished repairing the car, he covers all bare metal surfaces with an etch primer which will give protection against rust while the car awaits paint. This etch primer also provides an excellent base for sealers and the underbody vinyl, neither of which must ever be applied to bare metal. Seam sealer is brushed well into the joint all round the wheel arch, both internally and externally. As an alternative, a cartridge applied sealer could be used here, but it would need to be smoothed over with a cloth soaked in solvent in order to recreate the original appearance. Sealing will prevent water and silt getting into joints and seams. When priming has been completed, it is a good idea to apply the underbody vinyl coat, since some vinyls have a strong solvent base which could cause damage to finished paintwork. In addition, it is much easier to apply the vinyl before replacing mechanical, electrical and trim items. Vinyl must not be sprayed onto existing underbody wax. Here, a little white spirit is used to remove any wax around the edges of the area where the vinyl is to be applied. This will enable the new vinyl to be sprayed on so that it overlaps the old. The sills must also be prepared. A rub down with Scotch-Brite is all that is required. Any dust is then blown off. The vinyl has been well shaken for several minutes before use. The gun to be used is a body Schutz gun. The container is attached to the gun and the pressure adjusted in accordance with the instructions on the tin.
To make certain that the gun setting is correct, a test panel is sprayed. The panel is then checked to ensure that the desired coverage and a cosmetically acceptable finish are being achieved. Further adjustments can then be made to the spray pattern and air pressure if required. In this case, the vinyl is used on the sill panels, although many manufacturers specify that a stone chip primer should be applied here after the primer has been flatted. For instance, on the Rover 200 series, the manual shows that stone chip primer is required on the lower and leading edges of the panels marked. Remember that different models require different treatment. Since the vinyl on the sill panels will be visible, it is important that the vinyl coat is of a cosmetically acceptable appearance. The sills will later be primed and matte blacked. The underbody vinyl is applied around the repaired areas on the underside of the sill and round the wheel arch. This coating will provide a barrier against minor impacts from stones and gravel and in addition it will offer a resilient base for the underbody wax treatment which will be applied later. The car can now be handed over to the paint shop for flatting and completion of the sealing operation. Drip Check Heavy is used round the tail lamp panel under the drip rail, on the A-post, and round the petrol filler box. Drip check regular is used along the top of the drip rail. All areas to be sealed should have been washed with solvent and blown off. The doors and tailgate have been sealed separately using drip check heavy. The manufacturer's recommendations should always be followed and further information on sealing is contained in the Thatcham video program, Sealing and Masking. When the drip check heavy is dry, an additional tape sealer should be applied to this rear panel joint. Painting must have been completed before cavity waxing can be carried out and it's advisable to replace wiring looms where possible. Health and safety regulations require that a specific area of the workshop is set aside for the application of vinyl and wax treatments. The area must be well ventilated and have a fume extraction system. There should be provision for cleaning equipment and adequate storage facilities for materials nearby. In all instances, fire and local authority regulations must be adhered to. The spray gun to be used has a separate pressure cup. The wax is poured into the cup, which is then screwed securely onto the gun. There are various nozzles available, the two most useful being the hook type, which is ideal for getting into crevices and corners, and the flexible hose with the multi-directional nozzle attachment, which ensures effective coverage of the insides of box members. There is also a rigid metal lance designed for spraying inside door panels when the interior trim is already in place. If treating small areas, the wax can be applied using a small aerosol can when available. Operating instructions for the spray gun can be found in the manual and this should be consulted before setting the air pressure. Prior to spraying, the equipment should be checked to ensure that proper coverage is being achieved and the spray pattern should be adjusted if necessary. A piece of glass or plastic tubing is ideal for this test, but here a cutaway section from a sill panel is being used to demonstrate the action of the equipment. The wax application should always follow the diagram supplied by the vehicle manufacturer. However, in addition, all joints welded during the repair must be treated to ensure that the vehicle is not at risk from corrosion in these areas. For instance, since a new roof was fitted, cavity wax is injected into the cant rails. Strict observance of health and safety requirements is essential. The operator is wearing a fresh air fed mask, a protective overall and gloves. 
The car has also been covered where practicable to provide protection against any overspray. When using a flexible hose to spray into a box member, adopting the correct procedure is important. The operator pushes the hose right through the hole as far as it will go before starting to spray. He then squeezes the trigger and withdraws the hose slowly. The drilling of additional holes is not recommended since this will leave bare metal swarf inside the box sections and it's not good practice to drill holes in structural members. Major repair work was carried out on this vehicle, so the wax treatment required is extensive. All the downward pillars must be waxed. A logical sequence should always be followed when cavity waxing. In this case, the operator has started at the top of the car and is gradually working his way down. Where required, the flexible hose can quickly be removed and replaced with the hook nozzle. Some of the other areas to be treated include the lower parts of the quarter panels and round the wheel arches, the rear lamp apertures, the rear panel, the sills, the front chassis members, the underbody members, and the doors. When cavity waxing has been completed, the access grommets, which have been removed, should be dipped in a little wax before being refitted. After leaving time for any excess wax to run out of the holes, the surplus should be wiped off using white spirit. Equipment is available for the inspection of internal sections. Here at Thatcham, we conduct periodic tests with an endoscope to check that the cavity wax has achieved the required coverage. By adjusting the focus, it is possible to obtain a sharp image all the way along this box member. Here, a section was taken from an untreated car which shows how the rust has eaten through from the inside. This section is from a recently waxed vehicle, showing how efficiently the inside of the sill has been covered using the method shown earlier. The wax coating will give protection for many years to come. The vehicle has now been rebuilt and returned to the treatment bay for underbody waxing. The wheels have been removed to give access to the wheel arches. As with the earlier vinyl treatment, the underbody wax is applied using a shoots gun. Application should be generous, but the brakes have to be masked to avoid contamination. Using a small mirror, it is possible to check the inside rim of the wheel arch. Any areas not covered by the spray can be touched up with a brush. This procedure is equally effective for the underbody vinyl, which was applied earlier. After replacing the wheels, the main underbody section can be treated. The operator has started at the back of the vehicle and is moving towards the front. Every year, thousands of vehicles are scrapped.
Frequently, the cause is corrosion, eating into the structural members of the vehicle and destroying them from the inside, so that when eventually the problem becomes visible, it is too late. Corrosion both reduces the value of the car and leaves the unsuspecting driver and passengers more vulnerable to injury should the vehicle be involved in an accident. Ultimately, the vehicle is declared unroadworthy at its MOT test. The causes of corrosion are numerous. Hostile weather conditions, often aggravated by the use of salt on icy roads. Natural salts in the sea air surrounding our coasts. Sulfur dioxide from industrial pollution in our large towns. And finally, the basic design of the vehicle itself, which allows these substances to become trapped in crevices and box members. Being concerned about the consequences of corrosion, the majority of vehicle manufacturers have invested heavily in corrosion preventive processes. A good example is this electro coating dip incorporated during the painting process. The result is that long-term anti-corrosion warranties are now offered on a wide range of cars. All such warranties are subject to different conditions, so the warranty documents should be read carefully before starting on any corrosion protection treatments. This program will show work being carried out on an Austin Metro, paying particular attention to the various anti-corrosion processes involved. The basic methods shown are equally applicable to any make of car. However, it's important that the manufacturer's corrosion protection manual is complied with in each and every case. When tackling body repair work, the repairer must always ensure that the warranty remains valid. Usually this will mean employing the materials and methods specified by the vehicle manufacturer. And moreover, some stipulate that corrosion protection treatment may only be undertaken by an authorized dealer. The Austin Rover body sealing and preservation manual gives details of the operations to be carried out. On the Metro, the following materials should be used where applicable. A zinc rich primer during welding. Sealers on all internal and external joints. Vinyl sealer on the underbody. Wax on all interior surfaces of box members, cavities and doors. Wax on the underbody. And finally a coating of clear wax all round the engine bay. So right from the beginning of the repair process, the operator should take action to reduce the probability of corrosion occurring. Here he uses a zinc-rich weld-through primer on all bare metal edges which are to be spot welded.